Welcome to another edition of 42 straight years in on a crackhead update. I just left from up on Live Oak and because they rerouting everybody, they're working on the streets. So I had to make a U turn. I pulled into this parking lot at a restaurant. A lady standing there, man, she looked like she used a lot of raw crown grease because she was shiny like hell. Boy, she was having a hell of a conversation with us there. She was talking about some guy. Boy, she was talking her ass off. Her eyes is bucked. She looking crazy as hell. You know, she looked at me like she don't even reddish to me. She just looked. Kept her conversation going with this invisible person. That's my crackhead update. Y'all know what it is. Get your shanks out. Let's get ready to ride. Uh, at the uh, East Ham Union, it was uh, two brothers, and they always get in the cell with each other. Man, they fight like cats and dogs. I was listening to him tell, tell his brother one day, he said, yeah, them two kids you got, they ain't none of your kids. I'm their daddy. I was fucking your wife all the time. You just didn't know it. Boy, and they go to fight. They fight so much, be making so much noise, till the guards way out in the hallway or hear a fight going on. So they'll walk in there and check and see these two guys fighting. And they would call for backup. And sometimes they'd place them in lockup. And sometimes they wouldn't. They'd just move on to the other end of the prison. Because East Ham is a, is a big ass unit, got a north end and a south end. But the mother sent money to the oldest one, and he got to split it with his brother. So eventually they'll get hooked back up in the cell again. But they fight like cats and dogs. Now these two motherfuckers won't fight nobody else, but they'll fight each other. So one day we sitting in the day room, I'm waiting to go to the craft shop, waiting until they call craft shop. And uh, the guy had just moved on the cell block on a R line, and he, uh, I guess he trying to show out in front of these guys, so he tried to pick the weakest fucker in the day room he could, so he picked the younger brother. And uh, the only thing is, well, yeah, doing the argument, the other brother will tell him, yeah, I walked up on that dude fucking you. The other one will tell him, no, that we, he wasn't fucking me, that we, that's how we play. He said, you play with the motherfucker with his dick inside her? Man, we play tough, man. We, that's how we play, man. That's my homeboy. Everybody on the cell block know that this guy is fucking this clown. Everybody know that. And uh, we all sitting around in the day room. Day room was crowded. Everybody waiting till they call uh, traffic. Uh, people got to go to work, kitchen, laundry, garment factory, uh, craft shop. School, we uh, it's crowded in the day room. So this guy, he picked the younger brother out. He claimed that he disrespected. He was standing at the back of the day room, so the dude just walked up and hit him. And he jumped back. He don't know what the hell is going on. And, and, and when you back down from one of these clowns, they give them energy. They're going to come forward. You never back down. You take his ass a full charge. Never back down. That's a fatal mistake. The other guy's sitting there looking at that same shit. You ain't going to never be able to live that down. So uh, he beating him up. His brother's standing right there. And the dude hollering like hell. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. That's his blood brother. So dude told him, said, man, that's your damn brother, man. Man, ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't know what he did. Man, don't damn, damn what your brother did. You don't stand up there and let your brother get beat up. I wouldn't give a shit what he did. Y'all work that shit out later on, but right then, it's time to take care of business. So the dude just clowning because this guy won't fight back. I was trying not to laugh, man. He said uh, he hit him with a wicked-ass body shot. He folded up. He's trying to catch his wind. He said, he hit me in my belly. Boy, I said, boy, goddamn man calling his stomach a belly. I listen at this son of a bitch. I'm trying not to laugh at him. 
Man, he clowning. But little do he know that this dude got a hustle. So we came in from lunch. Uh, the field workers had went out, so all the rest of us waiting on. I'm going back to the craft shop. And uh, his husband working the garment factory. He waiting on the garment factory to be called out. So the day room still is crowded. And uh, guys done told him what happened, so he called the same guy out who done beat his fat butt boy up. That's a no-no in prison, especially at that prison. Boy, there's been a lot of stabbings over there behind them fat butt boy. You want to get your ass killed, that's an easy way to do it. You fuck with these fat butt boy, you finna get your ass, you better be able to back that shit up. Because you can bet one thing, he's coming. And uh, he called that dude out and said, hey man, uh, when you jump on my boy? Say, man, I didn't know that was your boy. He said, oh, oh, everybody in this cell block know that. Everybody on our line know that. Why you didn't know? Why you didn't ask somebody? He said, you disrespect my boy, you disrespecting me. So he, now he's a, he's a goddamn cow. He don't want to fight. He wanted to fight somebody weak who won't fight back. So this dude beat his ass up the same guy. He tried to fight a little bit. He ain't had nothing coming. Homeboy hurled his ass off the map. And uh, then he went over there and slapped the shit out of his brother for not helping the other one. I mean, this is, I, I don't, you know, if you was classified at the East Ham unit, I used to look in the Texas Armament. They, they got classifications of all Texas prison. East Ham was classified as mental retarded, criminally insane, and habitual criminal inmates. And when you talk to that prison psychiatrist and you talk crazy on a motherfucker, you could be a first offender. They was going to send your ass over there and you weren't going to like being there at all. No privileges. It's a big ass fucking prison. A lot of field work. And there's no fucking privilege. It was different than Ramsey. Ramsey got field work, but they had a lot of privileges. So if you made it through your uh, work date, you was good once you made it inside. East Ham ain't like that. You make it inside, ain't shit going on in there. You want to sit and watch TV, play table games. That's about it. They don't have, they didn't have no activity going on. None whatsoever. And uh, I'm going to go to the Ramsey unit. I had a partner over there. I, I was one of the younger guys at Ramsey. Very few guys ever was my age. Most of these guys in eight. 30s and 40s and 50s. Well, there ain't that many young guys there. And uh, this guy was uh, four years older than I was. His name was Curtis Austin. He's from Austin, Texas. And that's where I was released to. When I got to Austin, man, I tried to find this guy, but it'd been so many years I couldn't locate him. I hadn't seen him in over, in over 30 years since I seen him. But that was my buddy. I love to talk to him, man. He called himself Everybody called him by his nickname, Whole Pimp. That's his nickname. So, uh, his first day, he'd been to prison already three times. He don't never have big time. He'll have two years, three years, six years, and he'll always be an outside trustee. Once you ever been a trustee, they're going to trust you again when you come back. You will be working outside the fence. Because trustees are hard to come by. And, uh, <coughs> He plays Hope Pimp in one hole with us. And Captain Bad, Red Rider wasn't there that day. He had took off. So Captain Bad is running the workforce. So Bad ride up, by him being a new guy, most of the time the captain will, will talk to you. Even though they didn't talk to you when you first got there in the office. They the one who assigned you to your work squad. And anyway, uh, Bad rolled up and said, Say, old wophead nigga, what they call you? See, he called me whole pimp. I said, whole pimp, huh? He said, yeah. He said, I change holes just like I change my clothes every motherfucking day. I pimp holes, not Eskimos. I pimp ex Eskimos, crows, and snows. He said, oh, you one of them niggas who pimp them white girls, huh? You like pimp them white girls. He said, I pimp every goddamn body. He said, well, I'm a white man, you son of a bitch. Pimp me, you motherfucker. Get the pimping down that goddamn cotton field. Get that agony to move. Get motivated. Bad rolled up and hit him with them long-ass horse rain. He said, Captain, I'm working. He said, I know goddamn well you're going to work. I'll kick your ass from one end of this cotton field to the other end. 
You whole pimping son of a bitch. All you do is pimp them little young white girl. Now I'm here. I'm going to pimp my foot up your ass. Get to work. Boy, man. You know, this guy been in prison before. So he just took that as his introduction to Ramsey. He wasn't fucked up about that. Bad was like this. If you went to work, he'll leave you alone. But if you did not work, you finna have serious problems out of Captain Bay. You do not want to fuck with him. You sure don't want disciplinary. When you go into disciplinary, guess who's going to be sitting at the desk? Bad. He going to give you the worst punishment Ramsey got. He might give you one overnight in the jailhouse, four hours hanging by the handcuffs, then four hours standing on them damn soda water crates. And that's after you done worked all day out in that hot ass sun. They're going to let you shower and eat, but your ass is going to be standing out there on them soda water crates or hanging by them handcuffs. And motherfucker didn't want to get on his bad side. Really bad was a coward. I ain't never made a video yet. I whooped bad's ass. He really was a coward. But he got a 357 Magnum. That make him brave as a motherfucker. And he got all these other armed guards backing him up. Then he got the inmate guards backing him up. So that make him a bad motherfucker because he will brutalize your ass. But I, I, I was just sitting here thinking about, about old, uh, Curtis Austin. I said, man, I was in Austin. Man, I used to go on the east side of Austin. I'd, I'd try to look him up on the internet. I couldn't locate him. Well, a lot of people... It's hard to find. Like my old buddy I spoke on in several videos, the guy who exonerated, we're going to step out this weekend. And uh, he don't have social media. He don't have Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, none of that bullshit. He'll tell you, I got millions. I don't need that bullshit. He ain't trying to post on, on uh, social media about his Bentley or his Lambo. He don't give a shit about that. That don't mean nothing to him. He said, I can't make no money off the shit, so I don't need it. So some of these, this guy was hard to find. You couldn't find him. They got a website you can go on and they'll pay, you pay them a dollar 95 cents. They'll give a person email and they telephone on. I tried that on him. I found him over in South Dallas at uh, Miles of Freedom. The guy who run that organization, he's the guy been exonerated. And he asked me, did I know him? I told him, yeah. And I got his contact information through him. You can't find him on social media. And he paid his company to wash everything off of Google. You Google him, you don't find nothing. He said, man, I don't need contact with no damn body. When I was rotting in that prison, serving a live sentence, did no motherfucker help me, so I don't need to see your fuck ass now. I don't want to talk to you. I want to have nothing to do with you. Uh, I got to go get groomed and shit, because he, he probably be here by 2 o'clock, and uh, he going to... I think he's gonna get that uh, penthouse that we stayed in the last time. And man, we're gonna step out tonight. We going to Fort Worth, we're gonna go everywhere. We're going all over Dallas. But the only places we hang out at, they gotta have an outside patio. We do not be on wanna be on the inside. We make an appearance on the inside, just cruise through there, but we stay out on the patio. We don't wanna be boxed in with all them fucking people. Yeah, I was talking about once this nightclub that I drive past all the time on Ross Avenue to Republic. Man, it's a lot of beautiful women there. Boy, they be there lurking. They trying to catch up with them guys who got all that money. But the men dress casual. All the women got on their finest. Got on these expensive uh, red bottom high heels. And they, I guess those the guys read the same memo I read. A lot of chicks got it. Uh, uh, they got a thing where if they go to a club, they don't buy drinks. Guys are going to buy their drink. I was checking out in the Republic. Those guys wasn't buying them shit. You can look at the cars that these guys driving up in. A lot of McLarens. A lot of Bets. I8 BMWs. These dudes in here got some fucking money. Most of every one of them got some type of Rolex or something on. And women looking good. Ain't no fucking woman in there. Overweight ass woman talking about she thick. You ain't going to get a damn thing in there. All these women is fit and pretty as hell. It's the same way I went out to the Dallas Cow Cowboys Complex out in uh, Frisco, the star. I've seen uh, Ezekiel Elliott's old lady. I've seen uh, the Dallas, Cow football, Dallas Cowboys football old ladies. Man, all them guys got fit, pretty ass ladies. 
They ain't got no motherfucking regular ass woman talking about, oh, I'm fine. Oh, they, they woman, they old ladies is fine. They got eye candy, not no bullshit. And at this club here, it's beautiful women inside of there. Well, me and him went in, but we went in with females. Now, a lot of guys come there with an the old lady, but it's a lot of single women there, and they in there lurking. They all sitting back to size and everybody up, waiting on them free drinks. I noticed these guys wasn't even paying them no damn attention. They used to that environment. That's the first time I ever been around that many pretty-ass women in the same damn place. <coughs> I got to go take a shower and get groomed up, you know, Y'all keep your shanks ready. These motherfuckers is broke. They looking for that dope they lost two weeks ago. They talking to themselves, walking all out in front of your car and all kind of shit. Y'all stay ready to move on these clowns. You follow me over on Patreon. Support the channel. Like and subscribe. And I thank you for watching.